So as we begin the series on St. Joseph, just for a little bit of background, if anybody's interested in further reading uh, some of the books that I'm drawing on for, for content for this, of, of course, fundamentally, most importantly, is sacred scripture. But um, the Consecration of St. Joseph by Father Donald Colloway has uh, a, lot of good, a lot of good reflections in it. And especially I'd like to recommend the book Joseph the Silent by Father Michel Gagné. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the reflections that Father Gagné goes through in order to sort of paint a picture of what St. Joseph's like, life would have been like is, is what I'm going to be drawing on to, to sort of paint a picture of Joseph's life in my reflections here. So if you hear, if you hear me mention Father Gagné, that's from this book, Joseph the Silent. So the point of these reflections is basically that what little we know about St. Joseph is easy enough to remember that it's sometimes easy to overlook the significance of it. So I'll be focusing on various small details in the life of St. Joseph that are easy to overlook and try to draw out the significance of them. And so the talk today, I'm going to focus on two details. Joseph, a descendant of David, and a carpenter. These are two things that seem rather unassuming, but what I'd like to suggest to you is that this is actually a very strange combination to be a descendant of David and a carpenter. So why do I say that? We sometimes throw around Old Testament names without really considering their significance. We might think that calling Joseph the offspring of David is just as unassuming as calling him a child of Abraham or Israel, titles that would refer to every member of his race. But being a son of David is something far more significant. Remember, David was the king to whose family the Lord promised the monarchy of Israel forever. Do you realize the significance of that? If Joseph is a direct descendant of David, he should be king. But he's not. He's a carpenter. Why is that? Well, the history of it's pretty simple. The Jewish monarchy was interrupted when the Jews were conquered by the Babylonians. And between that time and the time of Joseph, the nation of Israel was swapped between several different regimes, some who were conquerors and some who were liberators, but none who were actually of the line of David, the only ones who had the God-given right to rule. So Joseph was David's heir in his own time. He was one of the few who actually had the God-given right to the throne of Israel. And yet, history had placed him in a carpenter shop instead of the royal household. But I'd like to suggest it wasn't just the conquest of Israel that brought about these circumstances. We would say that God's providence very intentionally placed Joseph in a carpenter shop. Now, why do I say this? Our entire faith and worldview as Christians revolves around the incarnation, God becoming a human being. That was the Father's plan for our redemption. But we're so used to the reality of God made man as Christians, we're so used to talking about this all the time, that we sometimes take for granted that this was a mystery until it was revealed by Jesus. It was completely unexpected in Joseph's day. The faithful of Israel expected the Messiah to be a military leader, a warrior king who would liberate them from oppression of foreign rule. So they would never have expected that the Messiah would be God himself, and they would never have expected that the Messiah would be an ordinary man who would be executed by foreign rulers. It would certainly be completely out of the question to think that the Messiah would be both of these, both God incarnate and an ordinary man condemned to death by Israel's captors. See, the incarnation was supposed to be a shock to the imagination of the people, a great revelation that turns everything upside down, because it's precisely this dramatic reversal and paradox that reveals the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. That's another talk entirely, but my point here is that it wasn't some embarrassing accident that Joseph, the rightful king of Israel, was a carpenter. The reality that Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, God incarnate, would be born into an ordinary and unassuming family is entirely fitting with the message of the incarnation. 
Because this message was a mystery. It was something hidden. Just like the early life of Jesus was hidden behind ordinary circumstances. The mystery of the incarnation, the mystery of Jesus' identity, would be gradually revealed over the course of his public ministry. But until then, the one who guarded these mysteries, who kept the mysteries as they should be, was St. Joseph. By raising Jesus as an ordinary carpenter, an ordinary man with ordinary parents, he kept the mystery of Jesus' identity safely hidden. Besides this, besides safeguarding the mystery of the incarnation, Joseph's station was also fitting because of how well it reveals holiness in ordinary life. It would not have been considered a dishonor to work as a carpenter, far from it. According to Father Gazier, ancient Jews highly valued labor. Every Jewish man was expected to learn a trade, even rabbis and wealthy landowners. The work was seen as something sacred, a way of calling down God's blessing. So Joseph would have seen his work as a prayer, as a way to honor God, and Jesus would have been brought up in that example. Right, so what does this show us? The the incarnation teaches us that human life, though fallen, is still good and worth redeeming, right? Because otherwise, Jesus never would have bothered to become human. St. Joseph, as the head and caretaker of Jesus' ordinary human life, shows us that ordinary human life is the true context of holiness. Thank you.